Hey, you there, the streamer. Yeah, you, the one who's super busy streaming, growing, creating good content. The streamer who can now upload both static and animated emotes to Twitch. Even if you're not an affiliate, this whole video works for you, by the way. You're so busy, you don't have time to download Photoshop, throw an image in there, learn how to cut it all out nicely, resize it, export it, upload it, let alone also having to download DaVinci or Premiere Pro just so you can animate a cheeky little GIF, let alone the money to spend on all of that. Today, I will be showing you guys how to do all of that. We will take any photo or any image you want. We will turn it into an emote, and then we will also animate it entirely for free. There is no downloads, no softwares, no payments. Literally, you will do all of this in a browser. And if you don't believe me, look at all these emotes we made. Wow, look at them all. Wow, that one over there is cool. It's moving. Whoa. Hey, I'm LJ, and yesterday I was watching one of the biggest guides on how to make animated and static emotes. And I was sat there with eight years of video experience watching this guy teach me how to animate an emote in Premiere Pro. And all I could think to myself was, I could not be fucked doing this. So I figured let's make an easy guide that any streamer can use, whether you're an affiliate or not yet. The first step you're gonna do is take a photo or pick an image that you're gonna use as your emote. You probably sat there thinking to yourself, yes, that's going to be easy. Wrong again, Billy. This is actually the hardest part about this entire guide. And if you do it wrong, then you'll find out five steps later that your emote looks like shit. Guys, emotes are small. In fact, I would go so far as to say they are minuscule. They are tiny. And despite what anyone says to you, size does matter. This emote is going to be shrunk down to be 112 pixels by 112 pixels. If there is too much detail, if there is too much going on, if you are too small in the original photo, then it is going to be impossible to see what is going on in your emote when it gets shrunk down like it's a cold day. You'll also find that if your action or the core of your emote is spread out really far horizontally, then when you go to turn it into an emote, the sides will get cut off entirely. Try to take a large but simple photo confined to a square box. Here are a few examples that I've made recently. Now, if you don't believe me when I say all of this, you can actually go to my channel that's linked in the description and you'll see just how small they are and how I try and make them as little detail as possible so that when they're put in chat, they actually work. And while you're there, you can follow me as well if this video helped. Before I move on from this section, if you're sitting there and you need inspiration about what kind of emotes you should add, I've linked in the description twitchemotes.com. You can go there and search up any streamer you want and you'll be able to see every emote they have and use those for inspiration for emotes that might suit your channel. Once you've got your photo, you're going to need to remove the background and make it a PNG. Now, a PNG has transparency to it, which is why we use it. If you use the JPEG or a different file type, you're most likely going to have a big white background or a big black background behind your emote, which doesn't look good. To remove your background, it is incredibly easy. All you're going to do is head to remove.bg and you're going to drag the photo or image you're using onto the site. It is an incredibly powerful tool and it should just rip the background out entirely. But if it makes a few mistakes, all you have to do is go to the brushes and edit them out like an eraser tool. How simple is that? So you just click download and it might tell you to use a credit. Don't stress, don't use the credit. Instead, just download the free preview version. You get 50 free previews a month, I'm pretty sure. And because we're shrinking this down to 112 by 112 to be an emote, having a lower res preview is totally fine for what we're doing here. I like to make sure I have a backup as well in case remove.bg changes or gets taken down. So I'll also link in the description the Adobe background remover. The only difference with this is if you want to edit it or customize it, you do need to sign up for their free plan. Literally just make an account, but that'll be linked there as well in case something goes wrong. Now that your image doesn't have a background, we need to make sure that it's square and we need to shrink it right on down to the 112 pixels. We're going to do this entirely for free in browser as well with another thing that's linked in the description called pickresizer.com. All you have to do is head there and upload the new image you've just created that doesn't have a background. The first thing you need to do is crop your image to be square. So select crop and then as you drag the crop, hold shift to make sure it stays square. Suddenly, you're going to realize what I mean when I say size does matter. I reckon 50% of the people who have gotten to this step have dragged that square out and then realized, oh, my emote has too much going on on the left and the right, and it's getting cut off. Once you do have that square confirmed, you're going to be able to hit save and continue and then scroll down to the next set of settings. Below, you'll see the words resize your picture and a drop down. I want you to click the drop down and select custom size. Then in the spaces below that, click width and height and set them to be 112 by 112. And then if we scroll down even further, we ignore all the special effects and we'll click save as and make sure our file format is a PNG, not a JPEG, everybody. No big white backgrounds. We want good emotes today. You'll click done and before you save it, click view image. This will open it and you'll be able to see exactly what your emote looks like in a little pop up. If you're not happy with it, click resume edit and you can make some changes. Or if you are happy, just click save the disk and you'll download it to your computer. 
As I said, I will show you guys how to animate these emotes. But first, I want to show you the uploading process for both affiliates and for non-affiliates. If you're not an affiliate, we'll be uploading these to Better Twitch TV. This is the most used Twitch extension across the entire platform. For Twitch affiliates, I want you to go to your channel and go to the top right and click Create a Dashboard. Go to your Viewer Rewards on the left and then click Emotes. And then over on the far right, you should see your emote library and the words Upload Emote. Click this and then select Standard Emote. Drag your emote up into the box and Twitch will automatically resize it to all the different sizes it needs. Now add your code for the emote and try to make this code as simple as possible. Or make sure you're using similar codes to large creators. So rather than typing LJ salute, we would call it LJ7 because that's what large creators do for their saluting emotes. It just makes more sense and is easier for viewers to understand. Once it's uploaded, you'll be able to click the emote and select the slot you want it to be unlocked in, whether this is tier one, tier two, tier three, or follower emotes. If you're not an affiliate or you've used up all of your emote slots as an affiliate, then we're gonna be heading over to Better Twitch TV now and uploading it there. You'll head to the Better Twitch TV website, which is linked in the description. You'll log in with your Twitch, and then you'll also install the Better Twitch TV extension into your browser. The extension is completely safe in my experience. Tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of streamers and viewers use it every single day on Twitch. And if you don't trust it, just don't use it. You, you don't need to if you don't want to. I'm just trying to give you a cool tool. Don't complain. You're going to head to your dashboard and you're going to click upload emote. Put your emote code in and upload your new emote. It might take a few days to approve or it might have been auto approved. Either way, once it is approved, then you're done. Anyone who uses better Twitch TV will be able to see that emote inside your channel. Okay, now for the fun part, let's animate these emotes. There are another two websites linked in the description. The first one is called makeemoji.com. You're going to head there and you're going to upload your new emote. It will animate it to all of their preset templates. You then just click the ones you want to download and bam, you've got an animated emote. At the top, you do have a few controls for color, speed of animation, and direction of animation. So you can play around with these as well. All of these preset templates are based on famous Twitch emotes that are already being used on the platform, which is why this works perfectly. Now it is missing a few templates that I'd really like, but luckily another website called Emote Jam has that covered. It is also linked in the description. It is the exactly the same concept. You upload your emote, They'll then generate out all the template versions. You click through the little drop down, and if you like how it looks, you render it out and download it. This one does have a small caveat though, in the sense that the green background is not gonna be in the final image. Essentially what they're doing is they're creating a green screen, and then when you render, they're removing the green screen. This does mean that if you upload an emote to this particular template generator, and it has anything green in it, it'll also be removed when the green screen is removed. It's really funny, because I've actually made animated emotes using Premiere Pro and all those other things, and most of the time, people just prefer these preset template versions because they're so similar to all the other ones they use in other channels. I've made dancing emotes, rave emotes, Thanos snap emotes, and so many other things that people just love. I love it. It is simple. It is easy. It is fast. And most importantly, it is free for you guys to do. Obviously, these aren't custom, but I think they're still pretty good for getting yourself set up. To upload an animated emote, it's actually the exact same process as before. You go to your Twitch, you go to the emote section, you click on the upload, but there is one small change. You'll want to pick animated rather than standard. You can either upload any of the animated emotes we just made, or if you want, you can click easy animate and then upload the static emote we made first. And then Twitch will give you a series of templates that you can use similar to the websites we just showed you. As a non-affiliate or someone like me who's used up all the animated slots, you just head to better Twitch TV and upload it the exact same as before. If you want to learn more about being a content creator, then YouTube thinks clicking this end screen is the right step for you. Or if you want, you can support the channel by becoming a member down below. You don't get much for it, but it just means we have less sponsored ad reads on the channel because you guys are supporting directly. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.